bloody hose. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to take the headphones off because that really throws me off. <clears throat> Holy crap. You would <laughs> not believe what we've had to go through to be here for you, people. IT technician. Uh, well, currently we're certified, looking, certified. We, we currently have a position open at uh, giving up the ghost podcast it uh, pays zero dollars and zero cents and free t-shirts maybe uh, maybe what does gavin do for a living gavin <laughs> <Are you IT? laughs> gavin this is sherry sherry this is gav hey how's it going uh, nice to meet you anyway hmm. this is giving up the ghost <sighs> podcast and uh reunited and it feels so good it is Holy it crap. Is. It's Thursday. Thirsty Thursdays. Thursday. Thirsty Thursdays. Yay. Cheers to that. Clink. De clink, clink. Prost. So uh, I'm on holidays. That's why there's been no episode this week because I was like uber busy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we're here. We're just doing recaps and we are going to make a draw. So now Sherry mm-hmm. does not like being on camera and I, I totally get that. So yeah. we're, we're going to do a Facebook Live, but I'm just going to aim the camera there so we can... No, do a Facebook Live just so people can see us oh. do the draw. Oh, right? you're going to stick your hand on the bucket? Yeah. Like that. So yeah, so uh, we're going to just sort of like do some intros to uh, the Gimli Psychic Fair. Cher could not make it, but mm-hmm. uh, she was there in spirit. I was. No Didn't you feel me? me? I felt you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for grabbing my ass. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the hooden folk of Gimli. Now, there is no doubt about it. Gimli is haunted. Um, Judy, we've been in contact with her. She has more stories for us. She oh, said, okay. get a hold of her. Cool. So Judy will have to try and meet up with her somehow. Okay. Another fellow, Adam T. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to give a stage name. I'll just leave it at that. He's got a uh, ghost story for us too from Gimli. Oh, that was actually from Gimli? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. He moved out of the area and now they're moving back in. But as his wife said in no uncertain terms it wasn't his story it was their son's story and they did not want to take part of it so adam told me to text him i'll have to see if we we can talk with him and and if it's all kumbaya we don't want to get him in trouble we don't want to get no we're not here for that no 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 divorces no no divorces no we're not that kind of people no Mm -hmm. excuse me but um teresa was going to stop by because i've got something for her oh uh like i don't know i was just looking at chats quickly yeah, yeah Are you able to come by? Because she was going to just kind of come and recap with us. She sat in at the Gimli Psychic mm-hmm. Fair. Uh, she also sat with me at the jail, which was always a good time. Uh, part two of that episode will as be... As long as you weren't in jail <laughs> no, together. It's, it's all perspective. It's always a good time when we're in jail together. It's always perspective. That's right. You know, unless, of course, you know, you end up in jail with your best friend. And I'm sure that's hilarious. Not that I would know, but... Oh, oh, she's messaging. Oh. I've got, no, that pie I bought, uh, she, she's going to buy half that pie I got from Costco down in the States. It's a huge thing. Oh, eat the pie. Oh, no, last time. You last time we bought. people to eat the pie. <sighs> it's funny. Everybody's like, oh, gung ho for it. And then all of a sudden, everybody just kind of goes ribbit. Yeah, you know? I know. And then it goes like wasteful Freeze and stuff. the pie. Freeze the pie. But she wanted the pie. It's just I couldn't fit two pies in her cooler. Oh. It's the peanut butter chocolate uh, oh. pie that you can only get down in the States. What the hell? What's wrong with the Costco here? We're not privileged, that's for sure. Privileged. Mm. Mm. No Canadian pie. So we'll do some quick episodes tonight. A couple of things we were told to look into that we're very, very curious. So we're going to discuss the who and folk on this episode. Who and folk? Who and folk? Who dem folk? Who dem folk? <laughs> who the fuck? But I was told that apparently back in the day, like I'm saying 60s, 70s, and possibly 80s, mm-hmm. I mean, going further back to that, I don't know when it was demolished, but there was actually a monastery in St. Charles, like in Westwood area, like oh, a monastery. Like an actual? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. And apparently one of the monks or priests there hung himself. Well, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. And now it's been torn down, but they say it's pretty creepy around there or, or, or was, it has been. Why would a monk hang himself? Oh. Well, guilty, guilty priest. Oh, hello. Oh, what then? I don't know. Okay, I should not make assumptions. I, I'm not like that. No, no. But I'm just saying it's just yeah. Well, depression. Who knows? Anyway, so we're going to look into that one. Uh, Another thing as well, we've made we've made uh, made friends. (laughs) Beer. So Amy, uh, who is one of the psychics, that or she is the psychic, the OG. That she is the psychic. She is the psychic. <laughs> yeah. Very nice lady. She, hi, Amy. She came, like, she organized the psychic uh, in, fair in Gimli. Yep. And she, actually, when I first contacted her about us getting involved in that, she asked if anybody had ever had any stories about Camp Morton 
just north of Gimli. Had you ever heard of any stories? Mm-mm. Remember that weird picture I sent you? I got it from her. And you can see like a whole bunch of weird ass faces in that picture. What the fuck? Yeah. So she said that place gives bad vibes. Anybody who, like it's deserted now or. Okay, it's like not, not like Jason and shit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> But it was actually like it's a it's a camp for kids. It was run by the the church, eh? I don't know which church. I think it was a Catholic church. If that's not a setup for bad shit, I don't know <laughs> I what know is. I... Um, oh teach their God. own. Something, I mean, if, something happened. If you need religion to you know balance out your life, and if that's yeah, good for you. Good for you. No, so yeah. we're not knocking that by no. any means. We're just some things are always questionable, you know. Uh, mm. Anything, yeah. Anything. Any any group, any group of any sort has got yeah. questionable yeah bad juju 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 bad juju (laughs) did i tell you i got in a facebook fight with somebody (laughs) speaking of which it was well it's easy for that to happen sometimes one of the radio stations so i'm gonna bring this up because fuck that bitch i'm sorry I even changed my real last name on Facebook because I didn't like this chick. Was I was psycho. wondering why your name was different. She got really weird psycho on me, and I'm like, "Really? Yeah." So, did you tell speaking her about Juju? Screw her hat. Almost. <laughs> well, I'm you know I'm pretty I'm pretty polite and stuff. So here's the story. Okay, uh, we'll get back to Camp Morton in a second. Yeah. Okay, so I derailed this train already. Juju, not yeah. even yeah, ten minutes like, in. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like the one of the radio stations had a poll and it said. I have a friend who uh, is going to ask his girlfriend to marry him. But the problem is he's using the engagement ring that he had given to the, his first girlfriend that he proposed that oh, turned him. Oh, bad, Juju. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like. Pawn that shit. Yeah. I'm like, my comment, all my innocent, it's like, yeah, no, the, that's got bad Juju and karma connected to that ring. There's just no way. Yeah. Somebody, like, this is my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's a very. I think it's a pretty decent opinion, quite frankly. <laughs> Why do you want to repeat that shit, right? Yeah. And then this girl comes after me and then she's like, oh, are you that superstitious that you think a ring holds that kind of power? And I'm like, well, I'm not sure about the ring, but maybe the guy is that much of an asshole. Like, do, and do cheap th- wad that he can't yeah. even buy a new ring. And yeah. what do you mean? Does the ring hold any power? Then why the fuck do we wear them? That's on symbolism. our hands as yeah. <laughs> love, her love. Like talk about show. starting or starting it wrong. Like, hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I just said, well, I said, if you want to wear it, go ahead, honey. You know, and then she just because it wasn't even, but it wasn't even bought for you. The intention. I'm no. all about intention. Exactly. The intention was for the ex-girlfriend that obviously changed yeah. her mind. So every know? time he looks at your hand and sees that ring, yeah. he's going to think of, yeah. oh, the one that got away. That ring wasn't meant for her. No, no, no. So and this girl was like, oh, and I'm thinking, I, that's I cause almost. She's, that's because she's wearing she the girl. else's fucking ring. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the hand-me-downs. Yeah. You know, I think I might have made a comment to her about sloppy seconds. I said, if you're into sloppy seconds, good for you, honey. But you gr- uh, that's oh, why she and got then, pissed. Yeah. Well, that's not my problem. Mm-hmm, so anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I wish you a good day. Good day to you, sir. Good day. But yeah. Anyway, so going back to Camp Morton. Sorry, mm-hmm. I derailed that train. But, but, <laughs> but like, oh, jeez. <laughs> But like, honestly, like just going back to intention, like, I mean, like not that, you know, bad juju and all that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, the whole idea is the ring wasn't really even meant for her in the first place. So no, why? I know. Why would you? No, why? You no. know, uh, anyway. Dick. people teach people, their own, people whatever. are people are people are strange. Oh, strange. But maybe, you know, maybe it was like friggin four carrots and they wanted the four carrot ring. Maybe it was a really expensive ring and he could get his value back, but even still, like, Meh. yeah, Meh. shit happens. That's like wearing someone's take. underwear. Like, go what? away. <laughs> that's, just, that's a wrong. That's just wrong. Yeah, well, you wouldn't do that, no, right? No, no. No. So what's this? Yeah. Oh, my God. Some people. Anyway, so going back to Camp Morton, uh, Amy had asked, uh, she says, every time they go out there, I think they've done, um, they've done like just like little field trips out there. It it is kind of still run by somebody, but not as a camp. Oh, I guess somebody bought it, but a retreat of some sort. Maybe, or? yeah. Uh. And it's it, there's a real bad bad vibe. And she'd asked, "Have you guys ever looked into it?" And I said, "I've heard of Camp Morton, but I never heard there being an issue with Camp Morton." You yeah. know, um, so we're gonna have to do a little searchy on that one. Yeah. Creepy. I'm just searching Creepy, crazy. really quick right now. Maybe like... we'll take it to Reddit because Reddit seems to have a lot of good take it to Reddit. answers. Yeah. Yeah, there's a chapel there. Yes, there was. It was founded and it was built in 1920. Ooh. Yeah. That can't be good. I don't know. Some place where Hubert F. <clears throat> Jesmer and his wife 
surely lived after World War One. Oh, OK. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So we'll look into that. We'll look into the St. Charles Monastery. And cool. uh, yeah, but uh, oh, I got to save this page because this is. Oh, sure. This is from the Christie. 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 <laughs> Christian family on Christ's mission dot com. Oh, OK. That's right. where this is from. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll leave that there. We'll bookmark that. We'll come back to that mm-hmm. hopefully in a future episode. So, and uh, house cleaning uh, things. We're gonna do the draw in a second. Uh, the other thing, me and Cher loosely talked about. Still gonna do this spirits with spirits thing. We're probably gonna oh, get yeah, a yeah. bus lined up. Uh, hit two bars. We just gotta get permission it's for the, the bars. The party bus. The pate. The spooky wagon. We'll have a few people we know on the bus and. We may open it up to one or two of you fine listeners. We'll do a contest, see if somebody wants to ride with but us. But if you're weird, no. No. <laughs> That's our people, man. I know. It's yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> Spirits with Spirits is a thing. Oh, and then uh, Amy, who's, uh, again, organizes the Psychic Fair, a lovely girl. Uh, she's going to have us come out to October 29th at the Continental Hotel in McPhillips. Continental. And that's going to be the Winnipeg Psychic Fair. So don't miss it. It was actually oh. quite a bit of fun. Cool. So we've got a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. And they'll be advertising for that and blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. And blah, blah, blah. You know what I found also? I was cleaning up some of my audio clips and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. I still have an episode from Six Pines. What the hell? Yeah, that was the one we were walking around, remember? Oh, yeah. yeah. I had to take that off my phone. Well, I did oh. it all on my phone, but that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm probably going to air that episode at the end of August. And, oh, uh, yeah. You know, James and Judy, they were wonderful to yeah, us. Hopefully you we still can... had it on your phone? Yeah. Were you like going, why do I have no space I on so my much phone? shit on my phone. <laughs> well, I have a bigger phone now, too, so uh. that doesn't hurt. Help. <laughs> Help. 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 Anyway, so we're going to do a draw. I'm going to do Facebook Live. Da, da, da. Oh Drum wait a second! Roll, what Teresa say? I just got home. Okay. You just got home. Yeah, I'm getting messages now too. I'm like, what the heck? No one talked to me all day, and now all of a sudden, everyone's sending me messages. Alrighty, I just what is no this? Worries. Death of Private Robert Gay. Say what? Part don't, one. Don't click on anything that has. Uh... But it was like Camp Morton began life as. Oh oh! I thought you had like one of those. Have you heard the thing that says "Look who, look who, look who died, look who passed away"? Oh yes! Don't click on that shit. You ever get it? Okay, I got an email from someone going, "We've seen your search history and what you've oh. been doing at <laughs> night," and I'm like, going, "Oh my god!" Yeah, okay, go for it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching TikTok, so what do you want from yeah, me? Yeah, I know. Over and over and over again. Over and yeah. over again. Mm-hmm. Love TikTok. I don't know why. It's an addiction. All right. So now we are going to go to Facebook Live. Live. Facebook Live. From Thursday night. It's, it's Thursday, Thursday. We have to go. Woo. Woo. <laughs> uh, this. Whoa. Sorry. That's okay. It's that little wiener hugger thing. You know what's, you know what's so funny? Like the hormones I'm playing, like messing with when I listen to myself. I've got a man voice now. <laughs> I have a man I voice. I have a man voice. I have such a man voice. I hate it. All right. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, wait. It's only part of me that's manly. Uh, oh, maybe my legs are a bit hairy, but. Whoop. All right, so we are on Facebook Live. We are doing our draw for Where is flash the oh. flash it in front of go like this over here. Yeah, we could put it here. Do, this do, is do, our one hundred dollar gift certificate that the kind folks at the Mariagi Theme Suites had graciously uh, donated for our draws. Uh, we had fifty entries, so that was pretty good. Thanks, yeah. guys. Anybody who liked the posts, they got one entry. And then if you also commented and shared, you got another entry. So Bonus. Doobly's. Bonus entry. Doobly's. So there's uh, 50 entries altogether. Mm. Oh, Baris Campbell is watching. Mm. Oh, I love that name, Baris. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Because it sounds like Catrice, but, you know. Yeah, so we're going to do the draw. I'll shake. Oh, You're going to shake the bucket? Oh. I'm trying to get her faces on here. Mm. So... Shake, shake, shake. Shake, 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 sh
you have your $100 Mirage gift cert here. So in saying that, uh, contact us, send us a, a DM. Yep. I'm feeling generous. Let's let's do a t-shirt because everybody waited oh, so long. where are they? What? Which one? Should we show one? Uh, no? Oh, I got them all packed away. Oh, yeah. And these yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. hi, Sarah. Okay, so we're going to do a draw since everybody was so patient for us. Yeah. And maybe we'll throw a little extras in there because I like giving shit away. I'm just like that. Okay. So we're going to do one more draw. This will be for a t-shirt just as a bonus and Cher's going to... Uh, I will open that sucker up. This is for a t-shirt of your Oh my goodness, choice. this is long Hi, and skinny. Hi, Sarah. Okay, and then Crystal Mer Messervira. Crystal Messervira. You want a t-shirt. Thank you so much for playing a part in our contest. And we're hoping to have more contests and stuff. Yeah. Uh, we were just, we're recording an episode right now. We were discussing as well. We're going to be having a Spirits with Spirits contest. We're hoping to get a hold of a boat. Boat? <laughs> No, what the know. hell we're hoping to get a hold of uh, a uh, bus party bus because i know a guy uh oh. and one lucky listener slash follower on facebook will come with us on the bus with a bunch of other rowdy well-known winnipeggers that yeah rowdy people well you know like winnipeg spirits. paranormal group perhaps oh, yeah. uh, perhaps mm -hmm. the two bait girls oh, yeah. uh mm -hmm. who else shall we you know boat yeah i know right that's the beer kicking in sarah <laughs> um so yeah so we're going to be doing that we just got to finalize the details as to which old and haunted bars will welcome us into their bosom oh, yeah give us some ideas to record yeah if you have yeah. any bars that you know of that are haunted or you think would be awesome we're thinking mm -hmm. like la salle we're thinking the nicolette because uh, apparently uh, i haven't been there forever forever and a day yeah. at least but remember uh ray ray from the two bake girls oh, she yeah, works yeah. there and she was saying it used to be a monastery right really yeah so we got to do That's a little just, research on that yeah, i gotta research that shit too yeah so <sighs> that is coming up hopefully in october uh september we gotta maybe uh we're thinking about fort lorraine we're gonna contact those people fort lorraine Fort Lorraine. they're really busy they've got some events going on this weekend so oh in any event stay tuned thank you yeah, for listening and watching and uh congratulations to our winners tracy tracy and crystal and Yay. dm us and we'll get your contact info and we will get the t-shirt and the gift cert to you thanks again guys take thank care you. bye 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 i was hoping that sarah would have would have won something sarah um the one that was just listening to oh, us. Oh, is she now? She's always following us. This Tracy because... person is new, isn't? Are they not? I think so. They're yeah. a new listener. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty following. sure. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this one, her and her husband were trying to get a gift cert for the hotel because they shut both, up, really? Because they were both, yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, we want the Egypt room. No, uh, we want the Egypt room. Farron's cousin good. I saw entered too. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. Yeah. It says, I don't know. Wheels. You're aiming it at me. I don't no, like it. no, no, no. I'm just. <laughs> it says, do you want to create a reel? And I'm like, yes, a I do. A reel? What I don't... the hell is that? Well, it's like a little video. Oh, to, on to the top play. of your yeah. thing? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I, I said, sure. Sure. Why I'm not? Feeling, I'm feeling adventurous today. Yeah. Since right. we have to IT every other thing. Oh, my God. Mine's will try and IT we that are shit, too. Our IT people. Here, if you want to just slide yep. that over there. Uh, I'll keep their names Ooh. separate over here. And uh, I didn't check. For August, like we're August now, right? This we are summer August. Summer the is end just, of, I know. Geez. Summer holidays are almost over. Yeah. It kills me. If any of you follow us on Facebook in July, we were the third top paranormal podcast for Canada. Latin freaking da. So I haven't checked for August. Not that that I have an ego or anything like that. Uh, paranormal podcasts in canada we haven't done anything fresh like we've just been we had so yeah. much extra goodies so much stuff from the doors open mm -hmm. like yeah oh here we go feed spot that's who we are oh your feed spot yeah. so yeah so There's so many feed spot we're we're playing so many episodes because we got so much material from doors open like three hours yeah. each shot so yeah. it's gonna be like part one part two part one trying to switch it up a little and stuff for you guys yeah we gotta do we gotta do some yeah. uh ramble sodes i love the ramble sodes my ramble sodes oh we got knocked from number three but we are number four for august oh, we got knocked i'm crushed i know who's beating us paranormal files canada podcast how dare they 
And then the Zin Zone. I haven't seen them on here for a while. They were number two. Oh, they're but from Toronto. Toronto. Everything's from Toronto. Tor- are they all from Toronto? Mostly, yeah. Oh, shit. And Ontario's most haunted podcast. But again, you know, they get the most listeners, right? Ontario and this Toronto This is our stuff. old logo on this one. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's okay no i know i was just curious yeah. if yeah. y'all if y'all like our new logos let us know that mm-hmm. was shara's work she's a I master i love it it's i love it's, it's, it yeah we're, and we've got t-shirts so it's nice um, and tight tight <laughs> so crystal uh who won the t-shirt she'll can pick whatever she wants yeah, the old style sure. the new style you know yeah i still gotta make um some t-shirts for the paranormal group girls when they go on their tours with uh um uh, Kristen from oh okay yeah mm-hmm so, but unfortunately, the style they want t-shirts, I'm all out. I can't believe it. I got so many t-shirts and I don't have that style. So hopefully. Anyway. What style? Uh, the V-neck. The I black with the V-neck. The I know. All I, I have know. is white with the V-neck right now. I, I look like so crappy. Like an, I hate that it's too. It's because I have a very wide shoulders. Yeah, yeah. So it like goes. I know. I don't like, it feels like I'm being like choked. Yeah. So again, this is uh, to go with our Gimli episodes because we're going to be getting into the Gimli Psychic Fair. Um, I think next next week it'll be the the last of the jail. We did. I can't keep <laughs> the track. last last of the jail. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be the last. I'll edit a lot of this out. Uh, I'm master editor. Um, Better than a masturbator. I don't fish. Anyway. <laughs> but I'm just. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> anyway, I throw it back. Uh, what was I going to say? So, yeah. So, next week, uh, next episode will be the final of The Doors Open, pretty much. Oh, okay. That should yeah, be yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to get into the Gimli uh, Psychic Fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, we're going to do this episode, which I want to read. And we're going to discuss about the Hooden folk. And hopefully, we're going to get some more tales from Gimli. Because Gimli is yeah. like haunted AF. I'm trying to think what other things are there. There's a hospital. How old's the hospital there? Not very old. It's not very old. No, no. no. no way. Uh, the hospital, but it's got so many churches. Oh, mm-hmm. and then um, Ashley from um, the Winnipeg Paranormal Group. She was asking, did anybody mention about a haunted house in Gimli? And she mentioned a street. And I said, well, haven't heard about didn't, that didn't one. Didn't we have someone else tell us about a haunted house somewhere there yeah, too? Yeah, there's, there's quite we a few We were like there. Google mapping some crap, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. So, but today, this will be kind of like our rambles. So it'll be the Hooden folk. Hooden folk. The Hooden folk. Do you want to go or you want me to go? I don't care. You got paper, right? I got the papers. Okay. So, so basically, food and folk. So, from the nymphs of ancient Greek mythology through the elves and dwarves of Germanic legend to the fairies of the Celtic folklore, little people with prenatural abilities who live in the wilderness and on the fringes of the civilized world, concealed from mortal eyes by other dimensional veil, or by some other dimensional veil from which they rarely emerge have been staples of European folk tradition for millennia. To the modern mind, this element of European folklore is the quintessential of fiction, the story in which it is incorporated to the atomical tall tale. Fairy tales are imaginary stories we tell to the children or a designation that we apply to narratives that are too preposterous to believe. Preposterous. Pinkies up. Uh, elves and dwarves populate our literary and cinematic fantasies. To our European ancestors, however, little people were very real neighbors who could confer good luck if treated mm-hmm. with respect and wreck, wreak shit all terrible over you. havoc, oh, yeah. mischief if mm-hmm. provoked. Yeah. So little people stories are not quite unique to the old world. For centuries, European immigrants to Canada have reported strange experiences on their homesteads and in the wilderness beyond their farmhouses. Maybe they like snuck on the ships with them. Oh, yeah. Are these are these like wooden folk from like Iceland? Yes. To Gimli, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. We're getting in. This is sort of yep. like the, yep. the breakdown. Just curious because there's yeah, yeah. little people here and little people there. Mm-hmm. You get yeah. two little peoples together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so this would be of the Icelandic variety. So their farmhouses, which mirror the little people tales in their homeland. Folklorists attribute these reports to the importation of little folk beliefs into Canada, contending that the settlers who disclosed them drew upon the folklore of their ancestors in an effort to interpret bizarre phenomenon for which no rational explanations readily presented themselves. Many Euro-Canadian pioneers, on the other hand, uh, do not hesitate and attributed the strange event from which such reports derive to the uh, to the existence of little people, so firmly maintaining that their mysterious 
Old world neighbors had followed or accompanied them across the Atlantic and taken up residence outside of their own settlements. Mm. <laughs> there you are. Pour moi. Yeah. In the 1870s, nearly 900 years after the Viking voyages described in the sagas, Iceland was rocked by a series of devastating volcanic eruptions, drought, and ovine epidemics, which rendered the island country all but inhospitable. Encouraged by agents of the Allen Shipping Line, a Scots-Canadian steamship company, which had recently opened an office in Reykjavik, thousands of Icelanders fled the land of fire and ice and immigrated to the Great White North. Following in the shadowy wake of the longships of their Dark Age ancestors sailing to the New World, Prompted by generous land grants arranged at the behest of Lord Dufferin, the Governor-General of Canada, many Icelandic Canadians gradually gravitated to a stretch of Manitoba Prairie on the southwestern shores of Lake Winnipeg, which would come to be known as New Iceland. Ever since, Manitoba has boasted the highest population of ethnic Icelanders outside of Iceland. Uh, in the summers of 1966, 67, and 69, an Icelandic-Canadian folklorist named Magnus Einarsson traveled throughout New Iceland and the rest of Western Canada for the purpose of collecting Icelandic-Canadian folklore. Throughout the course of his travels, he sat down with 98 Icelandic-Canadian old-timers and recorded all the local stories and traditions. That would be so cool. That wouldn't... Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. I would love that job. Mm-hmm. Uh, they wish to share with him. Uh, Einerson made 462 recordings, which wound up in the archives of the Canadian Museum of History in nice. Gatineau, Quebec. That's a lot of recordings, man. Mm-hmm. In 1991, Einerson transcribed 175 of his recordings and published them under the title Icelandic Canadian Oral Narratives. Magnus Einerson's collection of Icelandic Canadian folk tales reveals a strong belief in ghosts, Second Sight, The Power of Dreams, and the Supernatural uh, Among the Mid-20th Century Icelandic Canadians of South Central Manitoba. What I eventually found out in the ways of stories came as a surprise to me. Einarsson wrote of his findings in an introductory uh, to his book, I did not expect to find people to tell me fairy tales or or tall tales. I most certainly did not expect to find so many good humorous antidotes. And I didn't expect to find alive such a keen and pervasive interest in dreams and ghostly visions. Hmm. Well, yeah, look at the Vikings, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, mermaid tales oh, and, yeah. and the Kraken and the Kraken. all sorts of fun stuff like totally. that, right? For sure. Yeah. So amid tales of hauntings and premonitions, Anderson's book contains a handful of anecdotes pertaining to the Alfar, or Hutfenfolk, literally hidden people, mm-hmm. elusive elves of Icelandic folklore who live inside rocks, atop cliffs, and within hills. The belief in elves has had a stubborn death in Iceland, Anderson wrote in a footnote to one of the stories. The folklorist went on to explain that the Hutfenfolk are said to look, speak, and act like humans, but are believed to be an essentially different nature. Contact with the Hoon folk, according to the informants, was a rare and potentially dangerous occurrence in the world, wilds of New Zealand, or New Iceland, sorry. <laughs> wow, right New around Zealand, the world right on right that right. one. These mysterious entities sometimes attempted to kidnap human children and steal household objects. Hoon folk would occasionally approach humans and uh, entreat them for help and would confer luck or bestow particular skills upon their assistance as a reward for their kindness. Because elves are so bound up with a particular type of rocky to, topo- topography, Anderson wrote, there are not many reports of these being cited in the New World, but the belief is in them, nevertheless, quite strong, especially among the older generation. He elaborated, elaborated on the beliefs of the old timers he interviewed in another footnote, writing, in the new Iceland entitled settlement of Manitoba on the western shore of Lake Winnipeg, there seems to be a greater readiness, at least some among some of the older people, to see the environment in the traditional way uh, as having a fourth usually unseen dimension. Wow, mm-hmm. that's pretty advanced for back then. Mm-hmm. I'm not... You know, but like nobody yeah. thought in those terms back no, then. No, not really. No. 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 So it says then there there is in some of the more recent settlements as well as in Saskatchewan. Four of the Hooden folk stories in Anderson's book are set in Iceland, the birthplace of the respective storytellers. The first of these was told by um, Mrs. Sigurdis Thor, Sig- 
Thor Steinson, an oh. elderly whew, that was hard, an elderly <laughs> farm wife who lived outside the town of Arburg, Manitoba. Yeah. Mrs. Thorn Steinson heard the tale from an old man named Fusi, who would often tell her about all sorts of things that happen in Iceland. Fusi's father, Sven. Fusi's father, love, Sven. I love Sven. I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, had been a physician back in Iceland, and one night many years ago, a strange man knocked on the door and asked him if he would help deliver a baby. Sven agreed. After gathering his coat, hmm. I'll just finish this yeah. one off, hat and medical kit, the doctor stepped outside to find two horses tethered to his fence, one for which was apparently intended from him. Before mounting, the stranger insisted that the doctor be blindfolded himself, assuring him that he would guide his horse to their destination. Mystified Sven did as requested. They had traveled a long way, Mrs. Thornstenson said, and he had said it at all and he had said it had almost seemed to him as if they were going up the side of a mountain, and then when they had gone quite a long way, the doctor took the ha- or the, the guide mm-hmm. took the handkerchief from his eyes. Sven found himself at the mouth of a small cave to which his mysterious guide uh, ushered him. Inside he found a woman in labor whom he promptly assisted. Due to Sven's uh, Mr ministrations uh the delivery was a success and before dawn the healthy newborn was sleeping soundly in the mother's arms when he was satisfied that his assistance was no longer required the physician prepared to leave as he rose to his seat the new mother informed him that he would never fail in helping a woman give birth to a child the new mother informed him that yeah uh, Sven returned home in the same manner in which he had arrived, blindfolded, his horse guided by this mis- mysterious supplicant. Big word. Uh, he went <laughs> on to enjoy a words. long and distinguished medical career. And just as the woman predicted, he never failed in his prenatal duties. Oh. So I guess she gave birth but to But she a... wasn't a little person, though. No, but maybe... Maybe maybe she grew to a big person for birthing reasons? Oh, uh... Here's well, she one. was a hidden folk, per se. She wasn't necessarily a little no, folk. No, no. She was just hidden. Maybe. Literally, like, literally hidden in the side literally of a cave. Literally in a cave. Literally. literally. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a story set in Canada now. Mm-hmm. Um, elf woman tries to lure young boy. That's not good. That's what they always say. Yes. It was an elf woman. Really, it was. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to the stories above described, Einerson included five fairy tales set in Manitoba. I don't like fairy tales. I don't like that word. Grim. That um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grim brothers. Grim. Because yeah. they were grim. Grim tale. <laughs> well, I guess grim tales would they be were really pretty selling. Grim. They were nasty. I know. Yeah. Uh, set in Manitoba, which demonstrate a belief shared by certain Icelandic Canadian old timers uh, that some Hudenvok had followed their ancestors to Canada. The first of these was related to Mr. Halgrimur Stadfield from the community of Riverton, Manitoba. In a footnote, Einerson explained that the incident described took place at the farm of Rheinstad in northern New Iceland on Lake Winnipeg and that there had been two or three similar incidents prior to this one. Hmm. One day when he was a boy, Mr. Stadfield's brother, <sighs> Carton, Bob, <laughs> I'm like, do I pronounce that J? No, I don't think I do. Was watching over the family's sheep flock when he suddenly and unexpectedly approached by a woman dressed in a traditional Icelandic woman's costume. The woman beckoned for Cartan to follow her, and the boy, in a daze, obeyed. Ooh, he was spellbound already. Hmm. He had gone about a half mile towards the shore of Lake Winnipeg, Stadfield said, when he at last sort of came to, wondering where he was going. Uh, startled, Carton looked around for the woman and discovered that he was alone. Ooh. The boy returned home and relayed his adventure to his mother. Upon hearing Carton's description of the woman, Mrs. Stadfield concluded that she must have been an elf and that she had hmm. attempted to lure her son to the water. She could have been a mermaid. Oh, maybe. Right? Yeah. Water, water. Why would he be going to the water? She's going to randomly go to the water. Like, it doesn't make sense. Right. Um, three Canadian Hooten folk tales in Eiderson's book involve the elves' allegedly, uh, alleged propensity to appropriate random household items for their own mysterious purposes. The first of these tales was told by Miss Margaret Bjornsson, the sister of the aforementioned Bjorn Bjornsson, who kept house for the latter. Einerson interviewed the siblings together in their Arburg farmhouse in August of 1967. 
Uh, whenever Margaret did the laundry, she hung her and her brother's wet clothes on the clothesline outside. She maintained this practice even in winter and would wear a pair of mittens when spreading out the laundry during the colder months of the year. I was going to hang out some socks, she said, and then I discovered that my gloves had disappeared. And it didn't matter where I looked, I couldn't find them. Do you think maybe they were like maybe getting into the hooch though? Mm. <laughs> the ganja, the mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. The mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Time passed and Margaret forgot about the missing mittens. A year later, she said, I found them lying in the clothes pin box where I had always kept them. And naturally, I had often opened this little box. The hidden people had returned them. Mrs. Bjornsson never outright acknowledged a belief in elves and confessed to Ironson that she was unsure of whether or not they existed. She went on to suggest that most of the older people she knew definitely seemed to believe in them. Hmm. Hmm. Would you like to read the elves and the scabbard? Yeah, I got an elf to show you. Come this way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. but no, that's, that's... Who puts their clothes out in the winter time? They freeze. We're, we're, is this here? Now you're at the elves in the scabbard. All right. Scabbard. So after relating the tale of the missing mittens, Margaret Bjornsson prompted her brother to tell Aronson about his own brush with the Hooten folk. Bjorn explained that one day he went down to the basement to tackle some household chores. Oh, shit. It's in the house. Oh, shit. Oh. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the middies mm. were in there. They're in the house. Right? I know. Right. It's cold sure. in Manitoba. They ain't freaking I... walking around no, out there. No, I know. I know. <laughs> Um, so it, re- oh, and it required the use of a knife. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> Sounds like a horror movie. Once he completed the task, he searched for the leather sheath in which the, he always kept his knife, but wasn't able to find it anywhere. I made a determined effort to search the bed and that was, the bed. And it was there. He said, what does he do with a knife? All the around bed? and under it. And it was all for naught. It was in the bed, the sheath for the knife. Oh. Yeah. He oh. Says, and I went and got my sister and we searched again. Where we could, although uh, we had no idea where this thing might be, it wasn't found. So I said, he shouldn't bother with it anymore. That was pointless. But years later, or very close to it, I had some business down in the basement. Bjorn went downstairs to work the project and he found his knife's leather sheath lying atop the nearly made up bed. That's weird. What the Like it's there and then it's not and then it reappears years later in the same spot. That's weird. In the basement bed. Yeah. Yeah. That's creepy. It the whole creepy. story is creepy. Don't keep knives in bed, people. Jesus. Yeah. Like his sister, Bjorn expressed an open mindedness regarding the existence of the Hooten folk, but accepted them as a possibility in the framework of spiritualism rather than in the framework of traditional belief. That's fair. Mm, yeah. yeah. Sure. Then why is he losing his goddamn knife sheet? Sure. I'd lose my mind, really. Oh, you know? well, yeah. Well, Jen, you know, our yeah, 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 firefighter yeah. Jen, our yeah. third will, she had peop- uh, little people problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Things missing, disappearing, or reappearing. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm. So chasing an elf. Later in the interview, Bjorn Bjornsson told a short story about another Icelandic Canadian, the identity of whom he refused to disclose, oh. who claimed to have had been once chased what he suspected to be a supernatural creature. The entity in question was a man like in appearance, but shorter than a common strapping and robust during the pursuit the creature would sometimes turn around and beckon for the man to follow him i can't explain this any further bjorn concluded at the end of his brief tale this thing seemed to have had something not human it was something else something supernatural the interviewer asked yes he said Hmm. when asked whether his this man thought he had been following an elf miss mr bjornson replied that he suspected that this to be the cause but was unsure so I guess it was unsure as to who was, who was chasing who, who was following who, right? Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Snorri Snabjorn, the Hoon folk of Gimli, Manitoba. So here's here's the money shot right Snorri here. Snorri Gimli, Manitoba. Okay. So if you drive an hour north of the city of Winnipeg along the western shores of Lake Winnipeg, you'll come to the town of Gimli, Manitoba. Dubbed the heart of New Iceland, the Icelandic Canadian enclave is the setting of what is undoubtedly the most famous Hoon folk tale in Canada, a modern day saga which, like all good fairy tales, teeters on the border of separating charming fantasy to unsettling credibility. Mm. And then you got oh, your story thanks. right there. Right there. <laughs> unsettling credibility. The story revolves around Gimli's Town Hall, an enchanting 106-year-old building, which was initially employed as a public schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. The window that sits directly above the building's main entrance is surmounted by a decorative arch compro- composed 
composed <laughs> of three large, oh my God, trapezoidal limestone bricks, the middle of which is missing. The conspicuous mortar and crust of depression in which the stone was once set serves as a reminder of a seemingly unremarkable event which initiated Gimli's most famous fairy tale. Oh. Hmm. One day in 1975, the above-mentioned stone unexpectedly fell from the school's exterior wall, nearly braining a female teacher oh. who was been standing in the doorway. Many Gimli residents who still adhered to the traditions of their ancestors suspected that the close call might be attributable to the mischief of the Huden folk, whom Icelandic folklore contends often live inside rocks, such as those which adorn the school's entrance. Due to safety concerns, the local Evergreen School Division decided to close the school, unwilling to make the renovations necessary to bring the building up to code, as local legend would have it. The school's board refusal to renovate the edifice stemmed less from the preclusive budget than from a reluctance to risk offending the little people, a potential consequence of such a project. In 1987, the new school council, apparently unencumbered by their predecessors, fear of elvish repercussions, decided to demolish the historic structure, prompting a coalition of townspeople to launch a campaign aimed at designating the abandoned school a municipal heritage site. Demolition was delayed, and a series of unproductive council meetings ensued. In 1980... The crusade to save the school gained a new and powerful recruit, Dr. Leo Christensen, the 58-year-old freshly retired president of the University of Saskatchewan, who had just attended membership in the Order of Canada for his academic services, was dismayed when he learned that the childhood school was scheduled for an indefinite appointment with the wrecking ball. Out of the blue, to the amusement of some of the uh, astonishment of others, Christensen publicly came forward with a fantastic personal story which imbued the old building with a new aura of mystery and magic. Would you like to continue? Sure. Okay. The school was indeed inhabited by Huden folk. Uh, Christensen maintained, as many Gimli old-timers had long suspected. He knew this because of two of the elves named Snorri and Snorbjorn. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I passed the papers on. <laughs> Or would it be probably uh, Nab Naborn? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Had introduced themselves to him when he was a student there. The Huden folk there initially made their home on the second story of uh, Turgensen's general store. I've been there many times. Oh, really? Yep. Uh -huh. uh, it's the oldest. Yeah, it's the oldest of its kind still in operation in Manitoba. Uh, which was built in the heart of Gimli in 1899. When the store's second floor was removed in the 1920s, the little people took up residence in the attic, the newly constructed brick schoolhouse. Every once in a while, they would descend from their hideaway and play tricks on teachers and students, borrowing books, stationery, and other school supplies, uh, whichever struck their fancy. Mm. On a crisp autumn morning in the 1930s and 1940s, when Christensen attended the Gimli Public School, the elves would often sit in the attic window and watch young Leo walk over from his house across the street. The hoot folk took a liking to Leo and decided to make themselves known to him one day. Over the next few years, the student would have had several more encounters with the little people, who would sometimes answer his questions regarding their backstory. Snorri and Snabbjorn were pranksters, and Christensen was certain it was one of the two, one of who had dislodged the stone from the school wall in 1975. In nearly any other Canadian community, Leo Christensen's tale would have been received as nothing more than a playful attempt to inject some local colour into a dry and flagging yeah. historic preservation campaign. In Gimli, Manitoba, however, there was a deep final respect for ancestral tradition courses through local veins. The story of Snorri and Sabjorn, sure, let's mm -hmm, that. that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> met with both chuckles and tac tacit cred creduality. True or not, Christensen's tale gave new life to the campaign, helping secure much-needed government funding. As a complement to his marketing efforts, Gimli writer Kathleen uh, Herbert, which is now Arneson, and illustrator Jerry Johnson dram dramatized his fairy tale in a children's book entitled The Story of the Gimli Hooden Folk, in which Snorri and Snorburn, Snorburn whatever, was portrayed as a large-eared elf with creatures with colorful scarves and a tail and tall floppy hats. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, very cool. Um, I did take some stuff from uh, 
Wikipedia, we don't really have to cover through it. It just gives a description. We kind of nailed the most important yeah. stuff, which was the Gimli stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we can leave that. But yeah, no, that's uh, very cool. cool. I believe. That's Damn it. Cool. Don't you believe? I believe. I, I believe. Oh, my yeah. God. Anyway. Yeah, no, I was looking I was looking at the some Wikipedia thing, too, because I'm like, it says what? The difference between normal people <laughs> and outwardly human appearing hooden folk is that they have a convex rather than concave thing below their their little thing here. Oh. You know, instead of it going dip, it yeah. goes <laughs> Oh, really? It pushes out so they have like That's a little interesting. volley face under oh. their nose. Interesting. That is very interesting. That's how my dad used to smell things. He would go really? like this. He would go he would go He'd puff out his upper lip. Yes. Really? Isn't that funny? That is weird. That maybe, is he was a, maybe he was a <gasps> hoodenfolk. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're descended from elves. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So, you know, like That's I said, neat. it is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, sure, people have good imaginations, but where does all this stuff come from? That's usually how I go full circle. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, people could have just said, I'm just going to make up little people. Like, something must have or- originated, right? And funny how they have little people in Iceland and little people in Manitoba. Yeah. From two totally different cultures. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But yet, same idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I like how that happens. Very cool. I was like, I was trying to find, is it the same picture that I remember before where the, the Icelandic have those little houses they build for them? Oh, yeah. The little tiny, yeah. they're like little bitty houses in the side of a hill. They're like little baby they houses. They are, and they built them for the Huden folk. And... I want a baby ha- I want I a little know. house. I love, I do have a fairy garden. I haven't put it up this year because we're renovating out back. And uh, But, uh, yeah, it's so cool. And you love miniature things. Cher is, like, I'm so talented. Not for she makes, stuff. like, all those little tiny book nooks and shit. Yeah, and, I'm yeah. crazy. I don't yeah. know why. Very cool. I don't know why. Why am I crazy? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You're just crazy. We're all crazy here. Look, see, look at the little. Oh my little god, little it's so cute. Adorable. We'll have to post those pictures. I know. So, well, I guess we'll wrap up this episode. Mm-hmm. So, this is just an introduction to go. We're pairing it with the intros and outros we're uh, recording for our Gimli sessions that we had with the Psychic Fair, which was pretty uber cool. And hopefully, Cher can come out to the next one here in Winnipeg, uber. Mm-hmm. October 29th. Yeah, wow. I know. Crazy. You know, but it seems far away, but it's not far away. I know. I, I know. know. So in any event, if you wish to please, please, please interact, get a hold of us. We are found everywhere on all... Everywhere your grandma looks. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then some. Everywhere around the world. That's right. Spread like icing. That's right. That's right. So than... <laughs> what were you going to say? I, cut no, you I can't even say it. <laughs> It would be bad. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook is like the big thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And I mean, Twitter will. Yeah, it's kind of X. Like X. No. <laughs> Who would name an app X? X. Well, he names his son XYZ something oh something. I don't even know. But but when anyway. you think of X, you think of your X. X. You know? I'm going to talk to my ex. I'm going to talk about my ex. I don't want to talk. I'm going to go on X to talk X? about my ex. Like I know. Uh, uh, X I marks know. the spot. X. Well, space. Ow, fuck. Oh, fuck. Space X. Yeah. That's oh, probably why. Right. right. Probably. Right. The I'm branding. I'm link them all together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Elon. Oh, nah. my God. Should have called it MySpace. No, can't. That's been done. That's done. Yeah. Space out of space. Space out. Space out. Spaced yeah. out. Yeah. So, anyway, where do people find a share? Give me ghost podcast at gmail.com. Excellent. And as always, remember to live every day like it is your last. But never give up that ghost. Never give up the ghost. Bye. <laughs>